All right, one of the coolest golf tech inventions over the last decade or so has got to be the game tracker. And what I mean by a game tracker is essentially there are sensors you can put in every single one of your clubs, it will pair with your phone, and then these apps and these products will track every single shot you hit on the golf course. So you're gonna know exactly how far every drive was, how far every seven iron was. You're gonna know if you hit the green or if you missed it, what your percentage are for getting up and down. Do you get out of the bunkers? And then these apps can break down this data and actually tell you what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what you need to practice. It's truly revolutionary because previously the only way to get these stats was essentially to be on the PGA Tour. And now for a couple hundred bucks you can get tour level stats. It's pretty remarkable. So there are three systems out there that I would actually recommend. I have used all three of these extensively. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what those are. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons. We're gonna talk about how they compare to each other. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you the exact shot tracking solution that I am personally using these days that's kind of weird. It may not be right for everybody, but it's what I'm using based on my needs. So stay to the end of the video if you wanna know what that is. Also, as you're watching this, keep in mind, if you click any of the links below and you buy one of these products, I'm gonna get an affiliate commission for a few of these products, I actually have coupon codes too. So you can save a little bit of money. If that bothers you, totally no problem. I understand it. You can just go Google the product, buy the link direct from the website, and that's no problem. But my whole goal here is to make sure you're finding the right products for your needs. I don't care if you buy it or not. I don't care which one you buy. I just want to help you get the products that you are looking for. They're going to help your golf game. That being said, if you do decide you got some value out of this video and you do decide to buy one of the products, if you click the link below or you use one of the coupon codes, it's helping support this channel and it allows me to continue making making reviews like this one. So please consider that. And with that, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into the products we are talking about today. Okay, so I mentioned there are three main game tracking systems we're gonna talk about today. It's kind of like three and a half. I'll talk about what I mean in just a minute with that. But those are Arcos, Garmin, and ShotScope. ShotScope. And so all three of these companies essentially do exactly the same thing. They're all going to tell you how far your shots are. They're all going to allow you to keep score. They're all going to give you accurate metrics based on your game. But they do them in very different ways at very different price points. And depending on what you're looking for and how engaged you want to be with the technology, how much other technology you use, how important it is to have a watch with distances and things like that, each one functions in a different way. So one of them is probably going to be the right one for you. We just got to figure out which one that is. So first up, let's talk Arcos. Arcos is kind of the Ferrari of game tracking systems. Even though the Garmin is technically more expensive, Arcos is the one that this is what they do. The whole company is based around game tracking and they do it very well. The app is the most polished. I found the data to be the most accurate and it integrates with an Apple Watch, which makes for a really cool experience. The Arco system is super easy to use. You screw in the sensors in the back of your clubs, you pair it with the app, you start your round, you tell it where you're playing, and voila you're good to go. One downside to Arcos is that it doesn't come with a wearable, so it doesn't necessarily have an Arcos watch that you can use. That being said, if you're an Apple Watch wearer, the Apple Watch app for Arcos is excellent. If you have an Apple Watch Ultra, I have found that to be one of, if not the best way to use Arcos. When you have that, you don't even need your phone. It will track everything on the watch, it will pair with the sensors, and you can get distances and data on the watch while you're playing. One of the great things that Arcos does is it allows you to set your pin position. So you can get far more accurate data based on your approach shots and how long your putts are. And you simply go walk up to the flag and you hit a button on your phone or your watch and it's going to set that pin for the day. If anyone else has already set the pins on that course earlier in the day, it will automatically update for you. There's also one other way you can use Arcos, which for some people is going to be the best way. And that's what I'm currently doing. Again, we're going to talk about that at the end of the video because I've got this kind of weird hybrid thing going on that's kind of fun but works for me. But Arcos overall is a great experience. The downside to Arcos is it's not super cheap. Uh, the sensors are going to cost you around $200 to get going, and then it's going to be $155 a year after that, but you can get your first year for free. So some people hate the subscription model. I get it. It sucks. But at the same time, that's how a lot of these companies make their money is by being able to do that. They don't make their money on the hardware. So I understand it. As a consumer, it's frustrating, but I understand it logically for these businesses to exist. So overall, if you want the best game tracking experience with the best user interface, I think Arcos is the way to go. But what if you hate subscriptions? You're like, I don't want anything to do with any company that's got a subscription. And you're like, I also want a GPS watch where I can get distances and also allow it to track my stats. Well, in that case, 
the ShotScope X5 may be exactly what you are looking for. So ShotScope X5 essentially does the exact same thing as Arcos. You get special ShotScope sensors, you put them on your club, you pair them with the app, and it's going to track all of your data. The added benefit of the ShotScope is it comes with a GPS watch. So you can get all your distances to front, middle, back of green, you can get all your distances to hazards, you can keep score, all the things you would normally do on a GPS watch, ShotScope allows you to do. Hey, Editing and Sean here with a quick update. Of course, I shoot this video, and then right as I'm about to publish it, ShotScope drops this, the V5 sensor and watch. So this is the newest ShotScope watch performance game tracking setup. Uh, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I haven't used this yet. I have not compared it to the X5. The X5 is still for sale at $299, and this comes in at $249. So I just wanted to make sure you have all the information that I have. I will do a dedicated review on this, but if you are considering buying the ShotScope X5, I would do your research, check this out, and hopefully in the next couple weeks I will have a review up. But I just want you to know that this exists. If you're looking for a ShotScope game tracking system with the watch and you want to save 50 bucks off the X5, this is their uh, newest model. So take that for what it's worth. The retail price on this is $299, but we have a coupon code that's gonna drop 15% off that that you can click on below. By the way, there's also a coupon code for Arcos that's gonna save 15% on Arcos as well. So like I said, out of all three of these, I don't care which one you get, I just want you to find the right one for you and you might as well save a little bit of money in the process. After the discount, the price of a set of Arcos sensors is gonna be around $170. After the discount, the price of the X5 from ShotScope is going to be around $255. So the ShotScope is a little bit more expensive, but keep in mind, it comes with the GPS watch and there is no subscription. So you're paying less than $100 more, but you're then never having to pay anything ever again. And for a lot of people, that's going to be a huge benefit. The downside to ShotScope, honestly, it's just not as refined as Arcos. Arcos, like I said, it feels like you're driving a Ferrari. You go to ShotScope and it's more like you're driving a Honda Accord. The user interface isn't as sexy. It's not as sleek. It's not as beautiful. It doesn't give you quite as much data. It doesn't do quite as good of a job of making recommendations based on your data, although they're definitely making strides in this and they continue to improve the product. Even since the X5 came out last year, the watch itself has received firmware updates and there's been software updates that have significantly enhanced the user experience. So if you love the idea of having distances on your wrist and you don't have an Apple Watch that you wanna use, if you love the idea of no subscriptions and you are on a little bit of a budget and you don't care about that extra data or the user experience or the ability to very easily set where the pin location is, then definitely check out ShotScope. It's a great device. Hey, has this been helpful for you? Awesome, I'm so glad. We do videos like this twice a week. So if you wanna make sure you don't miss any of them, maybe consider hitting subscribe. It helps me out a lot and is hopefully going to provide more valuable information for you. Awesome. I appreciate the consideration. Now, finally, we have the Garmin system. And the Garmin system's a little bit different than both of these. That's one of the cool things about this segment is every company does it in a little bit of a different way. So depending on what you're looking for and what your budget is, there really is something for you. So Garmin sensors are called the CT10 sensors. And for a full set, it's $299, which is the most expensive for a set of sensors here but it gets even more expensive because in order to use them, you have to have a compatible Garmin smartwatch. So you have to have something like the S62, the S70, the S42, or even one of the Epix Gen 2. That's what I wear on a day-to-day -day basis is the Epix watches. And I've got videos and content for a lot of these watches, so I'll link to those below as well. And I'm back with another update that has dropped since I shot this video. With the most recent firmware updates of some Garmin watches, they have a feature where you can double tap the watch screen Screen when you are on the green and it will set the pin position. So theoretically, this is exactly the same type of function that Arcos has built in as well, but now you can use it with Garmin. I know for sure this update is on the latest version of Epix and Phoenix watches. Unfortunately, I do not know if that has yet made it into dedicated golf watches like the S70. But when I find out, I will let you know. So for instance, for me to use my exact Garmin setup, it's $799 for this watch plus $300 for the full set of sensors. So you're over $1,000 in order to use a basic Garmin setup. Now with Garmin, they do sell kits where you only get three sensors. So essentially what you would normally do is you would put that on your driver, your putter, and maybe a wedge. So that's going to allow you to get a lot of the data you need without having to have everything. This is again, one of the things that sets Garmin apart is because with their higher end watches, they have shot tracking built in. So without any of those sensors, this can recognize when I swing a club. I pair it with the Garmin Golf app, I swing, I go out in the middle of the fairway, I hit my next shot, it's going to be able to track that and it honestly works pretty well. 
Where it starts to fall apart is with putts and the way it displays it. It's just not great. So while I don't necessarily think it's the best experience to only use the watch without sensors, if you're okay, you know, fixing some data afterwards, entering in some more manual information to fill in the gaps, it works and you can do that. The major downfall for me of the Garmin system is the fact the app is just not very good. One of the things that is cool about Garmin is their golf app is a full ecosystem. So whether you use one of these watches, whether you use the Z82 rangefinder, whether you use the Garmin R10 launch monitor, you can get all your practice data and all your round info and stats in one app. Not to mention you can go and you can use some of the simulator features in that app as well. So having everything in one place is awesome, but it also really does feel like the shot tracking features are a little bit of an afterthought. So if you're trying to get real data to allow you to improve, if you're trying to really clearly see what all of your stats are, the Garmin system just isn't as good as ShotScope or Arcos. And one general concern I do have is this shot tracking system within the Garmin app, it really hasn't changed much over the last two or three years. Whereas Arcos and ShotScope, they're constantly rolling out new features, they're constantly improving the app, they're constantly adding new features. Garmin it just hasn't really been doing that. They're kind of like, well, we're just gonna improve the hardware, we're gonna improve the watches, and the app is fine. It is what it is, here's the data if you want it, but they're really not optimizing it and not creating the best user experience. However, if you use a Garmin smartwatch, which is light years better than the ShotScope one, I mean, the amount of data and the stuff this can track is insane. And that's the whole reason I personally switched from using an Apple watch to a Garmin watch for my day-to-day -day fitness and my day-to-day -day wear. Uh, it's just the data you get from it is that good. So if you already have one of these watches, then getting a couple CT10 sensors to track your drives and track your putts, and then letting the watch fill in the gaps, well, then that's probably the easiest way to jump into game tracking, even if it's not quite as good as the other two options in terms of data. But there have been a couple issues based on just how I golf and what I'm doing. So the first issue is that one I just mentioned. I switched from an Apple Watch to a Garmin watch because I'm really focusing on tracking my health and fitness right now. So I want Garmin to have as much information as it can about what I'm doing. So for a while I was actually taking off my Garmin golf watch to put on the Apple Watch only when I played golf so that I could use Arcos. But then it wasn't tracking my steps, it wasn't tracking my activity, so I finally stopped doing that. I started wearing the Garmin all the time, but because the Garmin watch doesn't integrate with Arcos, I was only able to use Arcos on my phone, which is fine. I keep my phone in my pocket and Arcos does its thing. It's great. But there's a lot of people who don't like having their phone in their pocket and that's one of their big complaints. So because of that, I have been stoked that Arcos just recently rolled out this. This is the Arcos Link Pro and it is awesome. So basically, it's this device that has its own charging case. We're going to do a dedicated review on this very soon. It's got its own charging case. You take this, you put it in your pocket. You start the round on your phone, you go play golf. You don't have to do anything else and it is going to track every single shot, everything you do without having to continually integrate with technology and do things. If you wanna set the pins, which I mentioned earlier is one of the coolest features of Arcos, there's a button for it. So literally you walk up to the pin, you reach in your pocket, you hit the button and it's gonna set the pin for you. So that's how I'm currently using Arcos. But I mentioned I was doing a bit of a weird hybrid. I'm using my Garmin watch to track all of my steps and all of my activity. So when I play, I'll have Arcos going in my pocket and then I will also start around on my Garmin watch to get distances. So I'm pretty much just using Garmin watch Watches for my distances to hazards in the green, be able to see if there's anything going on. I'm not really actively using the game tracking because like I said, I found it to be a little bit lacking and I use Arcos for all of my stats. The downside for me is, is because my rounds have been few and far between in the winter and when I am playing, I am often reviewing products and reviewing clubs. I'm not playing a full 18, I'm hitting multiple shots. That's gonna mess up the Arcos data so I haven't been able to track as many of the rounds as I would have liked to with the Arcos system recently. But to answer the question, I have been asked a bunch, do you still use Arcos and love it? Yes, absolutely. I think it's the best of all these systems. Are the other systems good? Are they worth buying? Yes, the other systems are also good. And depending on your perfect needs and your budget and what you're looking for, they may be the right fit for you. But if you're just starting out with game tracking, if you're looking for the best solution, Arcos is the way to go. If you have an Apple Watch, that's one of the best ways to use it. And if you don't have an Apple Watch and you don't wanna have your phone in your pocket, then I would pick up the Arcos Link Pro because it works night and day better than the previous iteration of the Arcos Link.
So I know we bounced around a lot. I know that was a lot of data, but hopefully you've got a pretty clear idea of the pros and cons of each of these products. There is no one that's best for everybody. They each cater to a slightly different market. And if you're thinking about buying one of these, I've got dedicated reviews that I will link to below for every single one of them. So if you wanna learn more about how each of them work, if you wanna learn more about the user experience, the pros and the cons, those dedicated reviews will have more information for you. With that, I hope you got some value out of this. I truly believe this is one of the coolest inventions in golf over the last 10 years and being able to get this data is not only interesting, but it can actually genuinely help your game as well. My name is Sean Ogle. I'm the founder of this thing here at Breaking 80, where we talk about cool golf products and cool golf reviews. If you got some value to this, maybe consider hitting subscribe, thumbs up, and if you have any questions about these products or how they compare or anything else, drop a comment. I will do my very best to answer every single one, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.